Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's movie blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well today. This is the second time that I'm having to record this video because apparently my computer decided to not record my audio. So hopefully it actually works this time. Last time I checked, the audio levels were coming out. So I guess I have to do that for every video now. I can't just assume that all of my software is going to actually work. I don't know why this is just a new thing that's going on. It just, it makes me mad. But anyway, getting to the topic itself, I made a, uh, an excellent, and you just have to believe on this. It was an amazing, it was an amazing 16 minute video. And unfortunately, none of it lasted. So I'm going to have to make a much shorter video because I just do not have the patience to put the brilliance out there that I put out for for those 16 minutes and so let's just talk about this box office prospects for star wars episode 9 just got much brighter according to scott mendelson now let's actually just break this down i'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible because i really don't want to have to rehash every single thing i put out there because oh man guys it was so good you have no idea but with all this being said let us talk about star wars so let's look at let's just follow the timeline so star wars the force Awakens came out two billion dollars over two billion dollars awesome great Star Wars The Last Jedi comes out, $1.3 billion. Okay, you know, still made a little bit of profit. It's okay. Um, but that's $700 million less than, you know, The Force Awakens. So <laughs> let's just not talk about that, though. And then we get to the most recent film, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Not even $400 million. Now, some people might ask the question, you know, oh, you know, that's because it came out, you know, at the wrong time, right? Or, oh, no, that's just because, you know, just no one really wanted the film, right? It was Star Wars fatigue. I mean, come on, it was Star Wars. Come on, it was Star Wars fatigue. What are you talking about? No, that's actually not the case whatsoever. In fact, it had more to do with the fact that audiences are mad. The hardcore audiences are mad. You know, this is an economic principle that our boy Scotty just doesn't quite understand. He doesn't understand the fact that when we talk about audience and we talk about revenue economic principle is that 20 percent of hardcore audiences account for around 80 percent of total gross for, for a variety of products and properties and the problem is that scott doesn't want to admit that that's the reason why star wars is either going to do well or is not going to do well he, he, he ignores that economic principle which just kind of makes me ask the question why are you writing articles about star wars for forbes.com if you don't even understand that economic principle that's just that's just me but star wars is in a lot of trouble Star Wars is in a lot of trouble for many different reasons. Probably the biggest reason out there is because of the way that the fans have been attacked. People have been called all types of names. People in the Phantom Menace have been called so many things. We've been called racist, sexist, homophobes. We've been called uh, alt-right conspiracy theorists, Trump-loving people. We've been called any name in the book. You think of it and, and, and it all comes, you know, and we can, you've heard it before. All of us have heard it before, if you can think of it. The problem is, is that by doing that, they have seeded any valid argument whatsoever. By doing that, then any single time someone brings up an economic point or brings up a logical point, even if they're on that side, people immediately shut it off. People don't want to listen. Why? Because you're also the same people that have been saying, oh, no, you're racist and sexist. You don't like Ray because she's a woman. You just can't stand that she's a strong female woman. Oh, you don't like Finn because you just can't stand an African-American man, even though he's not African-American because guess what? He's not American. I just love how that term is being used so casually now. Is on screen. No. It's not. Okay, Kelly Marie Tran. Oh, you don't like her because she's Asian and a woman. You can't stand that. No. Ray. <laughs> Ray is a Mary Sue because she's strong for no reason. Finn was a cool character that you totally made uncool by making him go to Cannabite. And it was all because of this character in Rose Tico. That is the reason why we don't like those characters. It's because they have bad character arcs. Because, as I've said a thousand times now, and as I said in the amazing 16-minute video, which I'm a, I can't believe I have to say it again, is this simple principle. Most people, when they go to the theater, do not care about the race or gender of the person on screen. No one, honestly, like, be honest with yourselves. How many of you actually go to the theater and say, hmm, I want to see this video because I identify with the race of the person on screen? How many of you actually do that? And then and there's going to be some people out there saying, well, it's a subconscious principle. You know, it's like microaggressions. You can't see them, but trust me, they're there because I have a degree in, in, in gender studies and in race relations, and I understand all these things. No, it's just, it's total garbage, guys. Anytime that anyone talks to you like that, th they got a garbage tier degree, and they have no idea what they're talking about. Because when you actually live in the real world, when you actually talk to real people and understand what real thoughts are you start to slowly understand that most people just don't care most people do not put race or gender at the very front of the things that they do in fact it's these sjw npc types that are the ones that do that if you want to talk about people who are actually racist who are actually sexist let's talk about the people who are constantly obsessed with both of those things homophobic too let's talk about the people who are actually actually obsessed with these things and we'll throw those names out willy-nilly you know freely as freely as the day to anyone 
who has any disagreement with him, any disagreement with him whatsoever, even though that what they're doing is seeding any intellectual discussion. Because what they're doing is instead of actually engaging with someone saying, well, there, here's why I disagree with you. Here is my point A, point B, point C. Instead, they have to come out and say, oh, well, you're racist. Okay, so what does that add to the discussion? Oh, there's no discussion because you're racist. I'm not going to talk to you because you're racist. Like, that's that's the world that we live. That's the society that we live in today is that you have so many of these NPCs. You have so many of these NPCs that they, they honestly just don't know how to talk. They don't know how to talk to you. They don't know how to engage. They do not know how to have a civil conversation. Because they would rather not have one. They'd rather say, oh, no, I'd rather just call you a racist and a sexist. Leave it at that because guess what? Then I don't have to leave my bubble. I don't have to leave my protective space. I don't have to leave my safe space. I can just stay in ignorance, blissful ignorance, and just talk to the same people who have the same ideas that I do who will just call you a racist and sexist too because guess what? Then I don't have to think for myself. I can just engage in this what's groupthink. And it's really dangerous. Groupthink, historically, has proven to be a very dangerous principle. And yet, that's what we're seeing, especially right now with the far, 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 far left SJW NPCs, is this groupthink mentality. And it's dangerous. It really is dangerous. But it also it takes away from what's actually going to happen with the box office. I've already said this in previous videos. Right now, there, there's a cap on what Episode Nine can do. There's a cap on what Episode Nine can make monetarily. And that is $850 million. Now, you come and say, oh, well, how would you come with that number? Well, let's look at the natural progression. I, you know, if we want to have a historical record for this, guess what? Look to the original Star Wars films. Every film made less than the previous film. Even though Empire Strikes Back is arguably the best, didn't make much as the original Star Wars. Even though Return of the Jedi is fondly remembered by many people. Maybe not as the other much, much as, maybe not as much as the other two, but still fondly remembered. Made the least amount in that bunch. The prequels, you see a little bit more jumping because obviously the prequels had a lot of problems going on with them. However, you normally see that kind of a kind of projection. So, with that in mind, and with what we know about the 20%, 80% principle, and what we know about how many of the hardcore fans have been pissed off. In fact, I've said, again, so many people, every single video, anytime I talk about Star Wars in a live stream, in a video, on Discord, in daily life, say, I'm done with Star Wars. I'm done. I'm over it. They could put the original trilogy out in 4K for all the world to see, in IMAX, Dolby, whatever, and I wouldn't go see it because they don't want to give money to the group that's currently running things. That's, that's just the reality of the situation. And it's not because they're racist, it's not because they're sexist, it's because they want good movies. And right now we've been given, you know, at least one mediocre film and then one that's just total garbage from a narrative perspective. And then on top of that, the people who made the film are going out of their way to say, oh, the only reason why you wouldn't like it is because you're racist or sexist. It's like, no! Guess what? If you call people racist and sexist constantly, they're not going to support your product. If you call people who just didn't like one of the movies that you made, and if you constantly call them variety of names, alt-right conspiracy theorists, they're not going to support you. As long as you're in power, they're not going to support you. And this is what Scotty and so many other people can't understand. Instead, they love to blame other factors. So let's actually dive into what Scott says. And so it re really, because we already did this before in the video, that is not unfortunately never going to see the light of day because all it is is my beautiful face talking with no sound. And, and, and it's just not, I wish that I could do that. And I wish that I could find someone who could read lips that could, you know, give me a script so I could read it all over again because it really was amazing. It really was fantastic. But anyway, this is what Scotty Boy says. He says, the biggest box office challenge to J.J. Abrams' trilogy caper was never about the alleged online backlash of last Oh, the alleged, it didn't really happen. It was allegedly happening. I mean, we can't look to the box office of Solo and say, oh, <laughs> there was alleged backlash. I mean, a movie with Star Wars in the title lost $200 million and didn't even make or break $500 million. Let's not talk about that. No, instead, it was an alleged backlash. And oh, at least some of which was propagated by Russian bots. I don't need to go any further than that because in that first sentence, Scott has already made his objectives very clear. He's already made his own principles very clear. And guess what? You don't have to go any further because anyone with common sense can know why Star Wars is not doing as well. Anyone can know that that is not the reason why. That was not the biggest challenge. Again, go back to the 2080 principle. Go back to 20% resulting in 80% of total buys, of total purchases, of total profits. When you take that principle in, all of this nonsense is meaningless. If you don't have the hardcore fans, if you don't have the people that are going to go buy the movie uh, on Blu-ray the first day it comes out, going to go see the movie in theaters 10 times, guess what? Not going to buy any of the merchandise? You're, you're not getting that money back. You, you, that's gone. Once you've lost them, you, you've lost any potential profit from them because guess what? Once they're done, they're done. And so that's what's being ignored here. So yeah, the alleged online backlash. No, it is because of the backlash. It is because of The Last Jedi itself. And not just that, but because of comments like by Ryan Johnson, Chuck Windick, all these people calling everyone that disagrees with them a racist or a sexist or a homophobe. 
playing this game of this dangerous game of identity politics again it's so dangerous when you put people in groups when you isolate people in groups when you separate people from each other you create tension and that's what's leading to so much of the violence and hatred going on in our current culture today and some people say oh aren't you perpetuating that aren't you you know adding your voice to it no because I, i'm just pointing out the way that things are I'm the one that's saying, okay, you live in this intellectual bubble, but you don't understand the real world. You don't actually live in the real world. And if you did, you'd realize what's going on, what problems are causing it, and how we can address it going forward. So no, it has nothing to do with Wonder Woman 1984, which by the way, I think in the end is a good move for them. So it, it was announced just the uh, past 24 hours or so that Wonder Woman 1984 is no longer coming out in the winter of, of 20, 2019. Instead, now it's coming out the summer of 2020. And I think that's a great move for Wonder Woman because I really do think, I honestly think that Wonder Woman could be the first DC film to break a billion dollars because guess what? It is the first in a franchise that has actually looked on a positive light. You, you pick any other DC film and guess what? They didn't do very well as far as, you know, critics and audiences go. They're not they're not movies that people have to watch again. Wonder Woman, at least, is brought into that discussion. I, I still think there's a lot of flaws to Wonder Woman, but there is no argument whatsoever that it is the best DC film that's come out so far. And so with that being the case, I think that this film will do very well. I think that 1984 will be that film to make and break $1 billion at the box office. I honestly think that's going to happen. But that is not the reason why. It's not competition that's going to be the downfall of Episode Nine. Star Wars has had to compete every every time it's come out. Whether it's been in May, like the previous films, not just Solo, have had to you know fight other films. Huge month of film. Not even December. December is also a huge month of film as well. So it has nothing to do with competition because if people want to see a Star Wars film, they're going to see a Star Wars film. The problem is, is that they have set aside now. They have pushed away the hardcore fans. And when they push away the hardcore fans, when you push away that 20%, that 80% comes further and further and further down, and then guess what? You don't make as much money. In fact, you end up losing money. Because keep this in mind, they've, they've got to make a lot of money to make the money back, because it's going to cost at least, what, $300 million, $350 million to make Star Wars Episode Nine. Half of that, you know, take half of that, add it to the, you know, that 350, and guess what? You're close to like 100, you know, $500 million, and then you take into account that it only gets 60% of its box office take. And some people say, oh, well, Disney gets better deals. No, no, no. Disney might get a better deal on opening day, maybe even the second weekend. But when you take the end of it, by the end of its run, it only makes 60% overall of the total box office gross. And that's just domestically. That's not even taking into, taking into account international, uh, in, international audiences. But with all that being said, what you understand then is that this film is set to, at best, get an $850 million, barely break even. So this, is, this film, in order to be profitable, to a great extent, needs to break a billion dollars because of how much they're going to spend on it. But if they're not even going to make that, because again, I, I put that cap, and the reason why I put that cap of $850 million is because, again, you look to the trajectory. You look to the fact that when you have Force Awakens, $2 billion. Stars Last Jedi, $1.3 billion. This film is essentially guaranteed to make less because especially of the reaction to The Last Jedi, and not only that, but also the reaction to all the nonsense coming from the people like Chuck Wendig and Ryan Johnson. All these things need to be taken into account. So Chuck Wendig, Ryan Johnson. You know, Chuck Wendig, of course, is no longer part of Star Wars because, you know, he's he spouted off a little too much and finally it caught up with him. You know, people, oh, it was the alt-right. It was the alt-right, just like they took down James, they took down James Gunn, the alt-right. They took him out. No, it's because he was an idiot and he said some crazy things and then he acted like, I never said anything crazy. I was simply speaking my mind. It's like when you actually read the rant, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm always on Twitter and I was going like this. And you understand that he was like that. He was like literally speaking like that. Oh my gosh, I need to go after all these people on Twitter. Like that's just my mind. That's what he sounds like. Just like, it's my generic SJW NPC voice. But with all that being said, when you look to these voices, because that's what they are, the, the, the voices of, because you know, you don't have Kathleen Kennedy coming out. You don't have Bob Iger even coming out. You know, he, he came out and said, oh, it's because Star Wars fatigue. It's like, no, you're not listening. You're not paying attention. Because if you did, you'd know the problem and you would know how to fix it. But they haven't. And I don't think they ever will. And so all I can say is with Star Wars Episode Nine, it might barely break even at this point. And that might be the best case scenario. But guys, what are your thoughts about this? How much money do you think it's going to make? Do you think it's going to barely break even when all is said and done, when you're taking all the money, all the totals from all around the world, and how much it actually makes of that? Do you think that it might make a profit? Do you think it might lose money? Do you think that <laughs> do you think that, that Scotty Boy, Scotty Mendelson has anything going on here when he's saying, oh, it was the alleged backlash? I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And guys, I... I I know that this video especially was all over the place, but keep this in mind. When I go on tangents, sometimes I am usually like, I'm, you know, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, you know, I, I'm on a pace and 
I'm on a roll. And so to have that and have like a 16 minute version of that, of just me like just connecting and all these other things and then to find out, oh my goodness, the audio didn't record and then have to do it all over again. My thoughts aren't nearly as lined up. I, I don't understand it. You know, I have ADD, so it kind of like that's how my mind works, but hope you enjoyed it anyway, guys. If you did like this video, please smash that like button. It really does mean a lot to me. It helps me out a lot as well. Again, it does not take very much. It does not cost you anything to do, so thank you so much for that. If you like this video, again, also share it as well. That does help me out too. Gets the name out there because sometimes, you know, sometimes YouTube just demonetizes me for no reason whatsoever. It doesn't even tell me why they ever demonetized me in the first place. And when they do that, it messes up the algorithm and my video isn't seen by a lot of people. So it really does mean a lot to me. But also, if you like this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear it. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Have a great day. And as always, God bless. Please, please have recorded.